Hello, everybody. Welcome into another episode of the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I am Ryan Warmly, joined this fine Tuesday morning by Andrew Erickson and by our guest, Bill Enright of Sports Illustrated. Bill, we were talking before the show. I keep thanking everybody for coming on during the busy season. But as you said, it's actually the fun season, right? Uh, Absolutely. This is what we all uh, dream about. This is what we all care for. This is what we all prepare for all offseason to enjoy the week in, week out grind of, of an NFL season. It's a lot of fun. It was not uh, so fun watching Monday Night Football last night. That was an, a hideous game. Uh, Daniel Jones getting sacked 11 times. Just just really ugly all the way around. Kenneth Walker uh, managers were happy, but beyond that, not much going on. So we're just going to blow right past that and jump into the show, which today we are talking about the week five buy low, sell high running backs. And we're going to start off with the most traded running backs. And the most traded guy right now is actually Damian Pierce. So, Erickson, I want to start with you here. Damian Pierce, are you buying, selling, or holding him right now? Damian Pierce, for me, I think is a player that I probably would be looking to buy. I think that when you look at the Houston Texans, they're a team that's on the rise in terms of how well they've played so far with C.J. Stroud. You go listen to anything, and it's all about anything NFL-related. They're going to talk about how great C.J. Stroud is. Like, that's really, like, the narrative that's being driven into the ground. And and honestly, like, I think that we were kind of ahead of the game. Like, even after that week one game where he didn't really put up great numbers against the Ravens, if you just watch that game, you're like, oh, my God. Like, this guy has that it factor. Now, kind of everyone's kind of finally starting to catch on to how good C.J. Stroud is. And this is playing behind one of these horrible offensive lines that's just been so injured throughout the four games of the year but it's going to get better because these guys are going to come back and get healthy and give Damian Pierce actual room to run the football so I think that Pierce is a player that yes his receiving usage isn't great they still use Devin Singletary a lot but if the overall offense is improving you usually want to have that running back on that team. So for me, Pierce, I think that worst case scenario, he still is going to be an RB2 regardless of however the Texans offense ends up shaking out. But I think that the upside is there for more if this offense does take another step forward, assuming that that offensive line does get healthy with the pieces back. Yeah, Bill, Pierce has only topped 40 yards rushing in one game. It was this last week against Pittsburgh. He's only got the one touchdown. Do you agree with Erickson that he's still a buy though? I'm I'm going to hold on Damian Pierce, and I think Andrew's point to to their offensive line woes is really the biggest problem. Laramie Tunsil has missed three games. Josh Jones missed a game. Uh, Pierce is, I think, like 90th or 92nd in yards per uh, y- y- yards per attempt before contact. So the fact that he's getting less than one yard before he gets hit. Yes, we know he's known for being a really tough runner. He's 16th in yards after contact, but he he's basically getting hit at the line of scrimmage, and that is a big problem for any running back, regardless of the volume they're getting. Andrew brought up uh, Devin Singletary. Pierce is still getting 56% of the team carries, which is still pretty good, 14th best in the NFL. Houston is rushing, uh, top 12 rushing attempts uh, on a per-game basis. So I- I'm not buying, I'm not selling, I'm just holding for now. Hopefully that offensive line gets a little healthier. And maybe once defenses start to respect C.J. Stroud a little bit, they can start uh, focusing a little bit less on on stopping the run. Let's uh, do some comparisons here and see some guys we might be willing or unwilling to trade Damian Pierce for. Erickson, would you trade Damian Pierce for Miles Sanders right now? No, I would rather have Damian Pierce. Miles Sanders, (laughs) like... He is being exposed as his five yards per carry was basically because of the Eagles offense <laughs> line like the past three years because he was he's been super inefficient running behind a subpar offensive line in Carolina. So I'll take the younger guy with Damian Pierce, who's also not dealing with like a groin injury. All right, Erickson, how about Damian Pierce for James Conner? Again, same thing. I want the younger guy like James Conner has been good at the beginning of the season, but this was to be expected. But Connor, as an older running back, is someone you're expecting to probably break down as the season progresses. I know that you could make the argument, oh, Kyler Murray with the upside, the offense gets better. But I'm just looking at James Connor. It's like it's all about volume with him. So I think that he's going to be a player that's probably going to decline in production as the season wanes on. Lastly, Erickson, one of your favorite sell highs all year, Damian Pierce for Raheem Mostert. Would you make that trade? 
No, clean, clean sweep. Like we told you to get rid of Raheem Mostert. <laughs> like that was the move to make. And now his value is sunk because Devon A chain, a chain, whatever his last name is, is taking over this backfield. So yeah, Damian Pierce for me, clean sweep. <laughs> By the way, these are all names that are within the same range in the rest of the season running back rankings, which is why I picked them. And so Bill, it's kind of the same three. Any of those three, Erickson said no on all of them. Would you trade Damian Pierce for Miles Sanders, James Conner, or Raheem Mostert? I might consider James Conner. I think Andrew's point about youth certainly makes sense, but Conner is just getting all of the volume in that Arizona backfield. Um, and they, I think the Cardinals are surprising a lot of people, right? Josh Jobs, they might not be winning a lot of games, but their offense is moving the ball. I, I like what they have in the wide receiver rookie, uh, Michael Wilson. I, I think this offense is moving in the right direction. And if we do ever see Kyler Murray this year, I think that can only help James Conner. So, that would be one I would consider. Miles Sanders, absolutely not. Raheem Moster, and I, I, I like the player, love the offense, but I think we all can agree that Devon A. Chain is here to stay, and he looks incredible. So that's a beautiful transition because the next most traded running back right now is Devon A. Chain or A. Chan or however it's supposed to be pronounced. So, Bill, I'll stick with you. Are you buying, selling, or holding on A. Chan? Who is trading this guy away? I mean, <laughs> he is the league winner uh, from the start of September with, with just explosive play after explosive play. Number one in yards over 15 yards. Number one in yards per carry. 11.4 yards per carry. Oh, okay. He had over 200 yards against uh, the Broncos a couple weeks ago. That's inflating his numbers. He looked great against a very tough Buffalo Bills defense. And he's number one in yards before contact. He is getting... 4.8 yards before he's even touched. And I just love the fact that the Miami Dolphins, are, I think Mike McDaniels is one of the best offensive schemers in the NFL. And I love the, the fact that the Dolphins are really utilizing his skill set. They're not just using him in between the 20s. They're not using him as a third down back. He's getting 33% of the team's carries inside the five-yard line. I, I think the only knock on him is that he has a pretty tough fantasy playoff schedule. Dallas, Jets, and the Ravens. But other than that, I want this guy on as many teams as possible. Yeah, he has just been an absolute delight to watch. Uh, just a perfect fit in the offense. He's so explosive. It's an offense that designs explosive runs. It's It's been really exciting. Erickson, are you also buying heavily on HM? Yeah. I mean, he had over 100, 100 rushing yards last week on eight carries. Raheem Mostert had like nine yards. <laughs> so, I, And Raheem Mostert also lost a fumble. So I'm trying to figure out a scenario where the Dolphins get away from using him. Like why the, the genie's out of the bottle and you can't put him back in. So I literally don't think you can because just how good he's been, how effective he's been as another dynamic piece in this offense. So for me, I actually have him ranked like he's an RB one rest of the season for me. He's in my top 12 rest of the season rankings for running backs. I, I don't know if that's consensus. I don't, I don't know if you looked at the consensus ECR ranks uh, for rest of the season worm, but that's where I think he should at least be valued as a fantasy RB1. Yeah, so it's, it sounds like you guys are probably not going to be willing to trade him for any of the names that I have listed here. Again, these are guys that are within the same range in the consensus rest of the season rankings. And, and to answer your question, Bill, I think it's people just thinking they're selling high, I guess. I'm not entirely sure why anybody would want to be trading away HN, to your point. But starting with you, Bill, here, would you trade HN for Jameer Gibbs? Hell no. Uh, I, I don't think I could be any more clear on that. This is David Montgomery's backfield in Detroit. Jameer Gibbs, if you drafted him in the third round or fourth round, depending on, on, on when you draft and how many teams are in your league, I feel bad for you because at best, he is a flex play. We saw him without David Montgomery in that backfield. He didn't do much, less than 90 yards on the ground. David Montgomery comes back, scores a bunch of touchdowns, just like Jamal Williams did last year with DeAndre Swift getting traded off uh, to Philadelphia in the offseason. So if you have Gibbs, I'm sorry, but HN is definitely the rookie that I think, other than B. John Robinson, he is the rookie running back that everyone should want this year. How about HN for Alvin Kamara? Uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with HN. And then lastly, DeAndre Swift or HN. I, I love what Swift's doing. Love Philadelphia's offensive line. He's another one of those running backs that are getting a lot of yards before contact, which is something that uh, just screams, hey, this offensive line is bulldozing the opposing defenses, and I love that for a running back. But I'm going to stick with A-Chan. We know about Swift's injury history. They have Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott, Rashad Penny, whereas for Miami, it's A-Chan, and, and, and most are will be involved. But I think A-Chan is going to just start running away with this gig. 
Erickson, any of those three, are you trading away A-Chan for or trading them for A-Chan, Gibbs, Kamara, or DeAndre Swift? I'll take A-Chan over all those guys. Every one of them. Clean sweep there. Guys, the NFL season is going strong, and DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking new customers up with an offer that's even stronger. Bet five bucks on any game this week to score $200 instantly in bonus bets, and DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day this October. This week, I am very excited for the excellent Sunday night football matchup between Dallas and San Francisco, two of the best defenses in football, and yet the total is 45 on DraftKings. The Spread is 49ers by three and a half, minus 105 on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. So San Fran is getting some real respect as one of the last two undefeated teams left standing. However you bet that one, get in on the game day greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code FANTASYPROS. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet five on the NFL. That's code FANTASYPROS only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Guys, let's move to our buy low running backs. Bill, we will start with your top guy there. I'm going to go with Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I think people were a little disappointed the fact that he was active uh, week four Thursday night. Didn't really play a whole lot. Kind of saw A.J. Dillon. He's got to take a hike. 2.6 <laughs> yards per carry. Enough trotting out A.J. Dillon. This Packers offense looked good in back-to-back weeks in the second half. Jordan Love is looking good. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, solid set of wide receivers. And Aaron Jones has been tremendous throughout his career on Monday night. Six touchdowns the last three years, 15 catches, and he's averaging 117 yards on Monday night football the last three times the Packers have played. They take on the Raiders this week. I think now is the time to buy Aaron Jones before he blows up on Monday night in week five. Yeah, Erickson, what do you think about Jones here? I am completely in lockstep with Bill on uh, can we never see A.J. Dillon again, please? Yeah, A.J. Dillon has, has been rough to, <laughs> to rough to watch this year, and apparently a lot of years uh, for Packers fans. It's been tough for him, but I, I would agree here. I think that he had a really bad run out um, on Thursday night coming back from his hamstring injury, and I mean, he kept, he got like absolutely blown up. Every time he touched the ball, like he was catching screens, just getting absolutely annihilated by the defense. So I think that 10 days off between the game, or actually another day off because it's, it's a night game. So I think that he's probably, yeah, someone that I'll be looking to buy low because A.J. Dillon is not, you know, a threat to him taking over this backfield anyway. Erickson, who's your top buy low running back? I'm going to the New York Jets, those plucky Jets. Uh, Brees Hall for me. Um, look, so Brees Hall, six carries, 56 yards. He flashed again, that big play upside on Sunday night football with the 43 yard rush, which was really the majority of his rushing yards. But we've seen this from him, even him coming back from the injury. He's had a couple big runs here and there that have really been the most explosive part of this Jets offense under Zach Wilson. So the way that I'm looking at the situation, they're facing the Denver Broncos historically bad defense. Like this isn't just a bad defense. This is the worst defense we've seen in like, centuries 10 years 10 10 15 plus years you know the guy that does the dvoa statistics is talking about this broncos defense as historically bad so yes you know, the jet is the jets offense good no but this broncos defense is so bad that i think even the jets can be productive against them and that starts with Brees hall who if you guys remember Brees hall was on pace for 150 yards and two touchdowns the last time he faced denver last year but then he tore his knee up so I think going back to Denver, where that injury occurred, I think it's going to be an emotional game for Brees Hall. But I think he's going to deliver. I think they're going to give him, they're going to feed him carries, and I think that he's going to have a monster breakout game. And this is your last chance to buy low on Brees Hall. The Jets' schedule gets much easier in the second half of the season. So I still think Brees Hall has a chance to be a league winner, and you can get him dirt cheap right now because he's basically done nothing, despite the fact that he's edging out Dalvin Cook in terms of carries, in terms of targets, and the Jets often showed some signs of life with Zach Wilson against the Chiefs. So I think that the arrow is pointing up for some of this Jets team, especially with the matchup this week against the Denver Broncos. Yeah, first of all, the difference between last year's Broncos defense and this year, like, Giro Evero might be the greatest defensive coach in history. <laughs> the, the difference losing him has made in the offseason. And, Bill, I want to ask you on Brees Hall. He's currently in our consensus rest of season rankings, RB23. I do think it's interesting to point out, while he has an amazing matchup this week, he has to face the Eagles the following week and then has his buy. So there might be actually another buy low opportunity, even if he has a big game here in week five. How are you approaching Brees Hall right now, Bill? 
I, I think he's a player that you'd want to go trade for before this blow up game against the Broncos. Even if he, we're just assuming that he'll play poorly against the Eagles, could be a bad assumption. Um, the bye week factors in, but then fantasy teams are like, well, he just had that. Huge game against the Broncos. Do I really want to get rid of him? I'll just hold him through the bye. I think Andrew said it perfectly. I love the fact that he is getting an increase in attempt share, backfield uh, touches. Dalvin Cook looks washed to me. Brees Hall has that explosive run rate. Nearly 10% of his carries are going for 15 yards or more. So he's someone that I'd be going out and getting now before this dream matchup against the Broncos. Bill, let's stick with you for your top sell high running back. Uh, I'm going to go with Josh Jacobs. I don't know if it's the offense. I don't know if he's still upset about not getting a long-term contract. Um, But to me, 2.6 yards per carry, it's just, it's brutal. I mean, that's worse than A.J. Dillon, who we just were ripping before. (laughs) I know he had a lot of uh, catches this past week. I think now's the chance that you can get rid of him. He gets plenty of volume. He's just not doing a whole lot. He, he leads the running backs, uh, the running back group position in targets this year, but zero runs for more than 15 yards. Uh, he has two yards after contact, 37th in the NFL. And again, another offensive line problem, 0.6 yards before contact. Just to put the things in perspective, Christian McCaffrey's at two yards uh, before contact. Bijan Robinson, three yards before contract, before contact. Josh Jacobs, less than a yard before he's getting hit. So I'm not saying it's all on him. That offensive line is a mess. Not having Jimmy Garoppolo uh, this past week certainly led to a lot of dump-offs going in his direction. But I think you take that big stat sheet, that big stat line from week four, and go shop him around your league. Erickson, Josh Jacobs has been on our, you know, by low running backs list from some of the guests the first couple weeks of the season. He's RB7 rest of the season right now, so you can get a lot for him if you sell off this big game. What do you think, Erickson? I think he's still a hold for me. I mean, I thought that it was a smart move to try to get him after he had a really slow start to the season. And I think that a lot of his yards per carry is just because of that one game against the Bills where he literally rushed for negative yards. <laughs> where it's like actually really nuking his efficiency, but you're not drafting because he's an efficient running back. You're drafting because he caught eight passes last week. Like where is the ball going? The Raiders are one of these rare teams that has a super uh, concentrated of their touches. It's Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams. They get the ball and Jacoby Myers. Like that's it. Nobody else gets the ball. They don't use any other running backs. And the Raiders were bad last year and Jacobs was still, I think RB two overall. And it just, it seems like it's the exact same situation again. So for me, I think that he is a hold. Um, I think that if you can ship him off for a higher upside running back, maybe like a B. John Robinson coming off kind of a, a meh game. I don't know if you're going to be able to get that done. But again, unless I feel really good about the return on Josh Jacobs, you know, who was a buy low candidate, because again, everyone sees the 2.9 yards per carry. So I don't know how much his value is. I think he's probably more of a hold for me because I know he's going to just continue to get volume. If you guys want the upper hand in every trade, you need to check out our trade analyzer at fantasypros.com slash myplaybook or on the Fantasy Football My Playbook app. Instantly see who wins any trade and how it shifts the balance of power in your league for the week, the rest of the season, and even beyond for Dynasty Leaguers. So stay ahead and play smart with the trade analyzer on fantasypros.com slash myplaybook and on the Fantasy Football My Playbook app. We got some listener questions from Twitter here. One of the questions is about a guy that a couple of guys that we've talked already here, and it's from Burmy. Trade Damian Pierce for Brees Hall, and this guy is four and zero, and this is half PPR. So Damian Pierce is somebody we're interested in, but so is Brees Hall. So Bill, would you make that trade? Uh sure. I, I think Brees Hall has enough upside where you can get some really big, big games out of him. Where Damian Pierce, to me, I'm, I'm not knocking his running style, but he, he's not an explosive back, right? You, you're banking on the volume. You'll be happy with 80 to 100 yards, where Brees Hall, if he really pops off, you can get a 150-yard game out of him, plus whatever he's doing in, in uh, catching passes out of the backfield. So I, I would take Brees Hall over Damian Pierce. Erickson, what do you think? Yeah, I have these guys ranked back to back in my rest of season rankings I talked about I like Pierce's outlook long term I like Hall's uh long term outlook as well so I slightly lean Hall here but I think it's a pretty lateral move I'm just being totally honest uh another question here we have from James 
I was looking to acquire Keaton Mitchell. It's a 12-man league. You start 11 with a ridiculously crazy bench and taxi squad. There really aren't many free agents ever available. I was thinking of offering a 2024 mid-second round pick for Keaton Mitchell. Current running backs of note are James Conner, Kamara, and Javante. What do you think, Bill, to me? It seems like an overpay, but maybe based on this league, there's just not that much available. What do you make of that deal? I I, I don't know if it's a rookie only draft that he'd be giving up for that that mid-2024 second round pick. I'm not sure that really matters. I don't know what, what, what we can really expect from the Ravens backfield this year. I mean, they have Gus Edwards, they have Justice Hill, Melvin Gordon is still apparently a thing. I, I don't know. It, it seems a little bit pricey to give up for the hope that he could come in, take over their backfield, and just totally disregard all the other running backs and not even factor in what Lamar Jackson has been doing near the goal line, kind of vulturing his own running backs uh, touchdowns too. So I, I probably wouldn't make that trade. I mean, Connor, Kamara, and, and Javante, though, they're, they're pretty solid running backs. So I don't think he's in d- dire, desperate need. Erickson, Keaton Mitchell, any interest there in that kind of trade? Did, did I miss the y- like y- Keaton y- Mitchell like hype trade? Like, like I, I saw him getting added like all over the place. I'm like, wait, what did I? Did someone get hurt? Like, what did I miss? I think I, I, I think more? I saw someone say that um, uh, somebody, one of the ESPN guys that's in a league with Adam Schefter, said that Schefter picked him up, and so everybody was like, "Ooh, that must mean something." Okay, so M- Mitchell did yeah. look good in the preseason. I, you know, as a Ravens fan, I watched a lot of those games closely. Like he, he was fun in college and had some explosive moments, but. Yeah, like people continue to overlook Gus Edwards is a really good running back and a really good fit in the offense. Like Justice Hill has looked explosive. Like Bill said, Melvin Gordon apparently still a thing. I mean, I, I wanted to include this question because it was asked and they did provide all this context. But yeah, to me, that seems like an obvious overpay, right, Erickson? Yeah, I mean, I'm not again like, you know, sometimes these insiders are right about stuff, you know, but sometimes they're wrong. You know, Zeke Elliott. Oh, he's going to see the starter snaps. <laughs> No, he didn't. Like, that was just totally wrong. So I'm not, I, unless, I mean, Keaton Mitchell, did he even play in the last game? No. Like, like, why are we trying to go after no, he's, this guy? He, he's, so, he's on IR, so he's not yeah, even back I, yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm good for right now on Keaton Mitchell. Uh, by the way, uh, the joys of doing the show live, and if anybody is listening back, uh, you should definitely check us out. We do go live on Twitter every Tuesday morning. We also do our Thursday morning show live on Twitter as well. Uh, I totally skipped over one of the players we were supposed to talk about, Erickson. Uh, I apologize for that. I wasn't trying to sell you short. Which running back are you selling high on right now? No, it's okay, you know, because we, this guy doesn't need a lot to talk about. It's Alexander Madison. Again, I'm, I'm bringing him back. He's a sell high. He, he was Again, your pick a week ago. Last week, because this is, is Cam Akers has taken over. Like, I'm sorry, folks. Like, this is going to happen. So, Alexander Madison, Cam Akers is active for the first time as part of the Minnesota Vikings this past week. So, Madison was really productive, 95 rushing yards, 17 carries. So on the surface, it doesn't look like Akers really had much of an impact. But let's dive a little bit closer. First of all, Akers was actually efficient. Like, I can't remember the last time Cam Akers was actually efficient running the football after averaging under three yards per carry basically since he tore his Achilles. But he averaged, he rushed for 40 yards, eight yards per carry. And this wasn't, oh, he had one big run and then just didn't do anything after that. A true eight yards per carry. Rushes of six, eight, nine, seven, and ten. Like, that's exactly what you want when you're talking about eight yards per carry. And Akers, who has been a total zero in the passing game his entire NFL career, has more targets than Alexander Madison in his first game back. Like, that is a big red flag for Matt Madison. Like, the fact that he's already losing up to targets to a guy who just joined the team who's never had a pass-catching role at the NFL level. So that's a big red flag for me as well. Saw seven routes to Madison's 10, so you're already seeing a split route participation, and Akers had seven touches and 29% snap share. That was higher than at any point that Ty Chandler ever played in this backfield. So you're already starting to see the team already likes Akers more than Ty Chandler. He just got there. He's already the RB2 in the offense. And he's already seeing some high-value touches and efficiency spikes that we weren't getting from Ty Chandler, which I think could eat into Alexander Madison. So, again, I was not high on Madison as a draft guy. I thought that he was a jag. I still think he's a jag. And now that he has legitimate competition in the form of Cam Akers, I'm trying to sell high. He's had two good games. In the box score, he's been productive as a rusher, hasn't really scored, but I think that this is the time to kind of wipe your hands clean of Alexander Madison. I don't know what your, I don't think you're going to get an amazing return, but I just think that his value is going to dip as Cam Akers gets more involved with this offense moving forward. 
Yeah, Bill, do you agree here? I mean, the state of the running back position, a guy that's gotten 90 rushing yards back-to-back weeks, it seems kind of hard to say you're willing to part with him, but this is the second straight week that Erickson has had him on a sell-high list for running backs. Do you agree? I think the minute that the Vikings decided to trade for Cam Akers was the death knell for Alexander Madison. Uh, the I, I know he's been playing good the last couple of games. Uh, I go back to that game where he fumbled a lot against the Eagles I'm glad he bounced back from that, but it seems like the the front office of the Minnesota right after that game, they were like, we, we got to do something at running back. And maybe they started making some phone calls and it just lined up perfectly that, that the OC and, and, and uh, was with the Rams and Cam Akers liked playing there. And um, so if you could, if you could get something good for Alexander Madison, go ahead and do it. I wouldn't give him up for cheap. Like Andrew said, if you want to sell high, now now certainly the time to do it, though. That will wrap things up for us. Everybody be sure to stick around. We've got the Wide Receiver Show coming up later today. For Erickson and Bill, I am Ryan Warmly. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you again later. <laughs>